A very good day to you and welcome to the program. We are shooting today in the chapel at Shalom because outside it's a rainy day and we are farmers and we are not complaining. We are thanking God for the rain. How is it with you in your life today? I want to speak to you about immortality. Immortality means forever. I want to say to you that God is fully in control of the length of time that you will live on this earth. The reason why I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to share this message with you today is because I meet many people, not just old people, a lot of young people too who are afraid to die. And some of them are not sure how long they're going to live on this earth. I want to reassure you today that everything is totally in God's hands. Okay, you cannot extend your life and you cannot shorten your life without God's permission. And if we go to the, the uh, Psalm 118, I just want to read one verse to you. Psalm 118 and verse 17 says, I shall not die, but live. And I shall declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me, disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. In other words, until God's work is complete, you will not die. And I've heard many men say that before. When people say, I'm going to kill you, you say, no, I am immortal until the work of the Lord in my life is finished. And that is really a fact, folks. And I find a lot of security in that. You know, you can get on the treadmill, you can go into the gym, you can eat correctly, you can sleep so many hours. That will not lengthen your life on this earth. It'll give you good health, and you'll probably enjoy life a lot more because you're fit and healthy, but it will not lengthen your life. Your days have been numbered since before you were conceived in your mother's womb. That's a fact. So we cannot lengthen our lives. We cannot shorten our lives without God's permission. Obviously, I'm not talking about suicide. God even knows about that, by the way, because He knows everything. You have no right to take your own life. I really want to make that very clear, especially to young people. I was so sad that last night when I was listening to the news, they said in Japan, oh, I don't know why Japan, they said in Japan they have got the highest suicide rate in 30 years. Why? Because people are desperate, folks. People need to know about Jesus. People need to have the security that you find only by serving God. You see, Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is but gain. So when we live as believers, we live for Jesus, and when we die, we go home to be with Jesus forever. Folks, I want to tell you, that brings a lot of comfort to me. Because believers, you can't frighten them, can you? You can't frighten them with heaven and you can't frighten them with this earth because when they're living here, they're living for Jesus. When they die, they're going home to heaven to be with Him forever. And that's good news. I'm talking to a lady there who's maybe fearful. She's lost her husband and maybe she's a widow and maybe you're sitting in your flat by yourself tonight. I want to say to you that God is in control. You have nothing to fear. All you've got to do is to live each day purposefully for Him. And He will take you home at the right time. No matter how many enemies you have, sir, you will not lie down and you will not be defeated because God is in control of your life. Do not listen to the whispers and the fear and give up in the battle. Keep standing because the, the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you the victory. The battle that you are fighting is not in the heart. It is in the mind. 
The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. I think you'll find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. The Lord is fully in control of your life. So before you were born, he already knew how many days you're going to live on this earth. So you cannot prolong your life and you cannot shorten your life. I was having a chat to my wife, Jill, not so long ago, and she was in full agreement. But one thing she did say, and I thought this was so interesting. She said, Angus, even though the Lord might be in control of how many days we live on this earth, the way we live those days, that's in our control. You ask me the question, what do you mean? Well, if you are going to purposefully continue to smoke, and you are battling with problems with your lungs, with emphysema, you can't breathe properly, maybe, I don't know what it is, some kind of chest infection, but you continue to smoke, you will have a very unpleasant time on this earth. Okay, and I, I, I want to really stress that. If you continue to drink alcohol and you know that it is damaging your health, but you continue to do so, then you are going to have a very sad, painful, unpleasant life on earth. But if you decide at the end of this program to pack it up, you will have a very peaceful, fulfilled invigorating life while you're still on earth. And then when the Lord Jesus sees it fit, he'll take you home. So how you live on the earth is your decision, but the length of time on the earth is God's decision. And that is what really encourages me. I shall not die until my mission on earth is completed. So it doesn't matter what somebody says to you. They can have a, hold a gun at your head. You'll say, you will not kill me until God says so. And that's what I want to say to you. We live because God says that we shall live. And we die when God tells us that you're going home. I remember a lady, she might even be watching the program. Daphne was a very fine nursing sister. And she told my wife and I that many a time she'd go into a, a private ward where someone is dying, and that person that is dying does not know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, so they have no idea where they are going when they die. She said it is the most terrible feeling. You go into that room, and it's just fear. Everywhere is fear and anger and confusion and desperation. The patient is grinding their teeth and sometimes cursing, because they are afraid and they don't know where they're going before they die. She goes into the next room, and in that room is a child of God, a committed believer. There is a peace. There is almost an aroma and a smell of absolute love. And the person is lying there and quite ready to go home and to meet their maker to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. She said, it's so beautiful. Almost makes you feel envious. They're going home. You and I need to understand one thing. There is one thing for sure. Unless Jesus comes tomorrow, every single one of you watching this program is going to die. That is a given. There's no discussion about that. You are going to die. Every single one of you. You need to make a decision today. When you die, where are you going? You see, because none of us is immortal on this earth. Our spirit, however, is immortal. That's right. You see, the spirit of a man never dies. And even myself, before I became a believer, I used to be of the, um, of the persuasion, let's eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow we die. No, you don't die. Your spirit goes to one of two places. Either your spirit goes to heaven or to hell. Either your spirit is going to remain with Jesus or it's going to remain without Jesus. Because to me, that's, that's the definition of hell. For me, hell is to be without God. I can't imagine anything worse than that. 
And to be in heaven is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. The decision is ours. I would really exhort you today to make the correct decision. Then you don't have to worry about when I'm going to die, how I'm going to die, what's going to happen when I die. Because God has promised you He'll never leave you and He'll never forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. So we're not just living for now. We are living forever. John Wesley, that uh, English clergyman who, who was instrumental by God in causing a massive revival, they hated him because he told them that the spirit will never die. See, people don't want to hear that side of the story. They say, when we die, then it's over. No, it's not over. The spirit never dies. So your spirit either lives with Jesus or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, it go, according to the Bible, I'm going by the word of God. It goes into a lake of fire where it burns forever. Never dies. We have a decision to make. You say to me, Uncle Angus, you're making me afraid. No, I'm not making you afraid, my, my friend. I'm warning you that we have got to be prepared. So we are immortal until our work on earth has been completed. If we go back to the Word of God, you'll see that the saints, those who were crucified, those who were strangled, those who were boiled in oil, that's a fact. They died singing hymns. And I must be honest with you, when I read some of the stories, Stephen getting stoned, I can't think of a more painful death. Lord, do not hold this sin against them today. How can a man say that? Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Why? Because they knew where they were going. They were going to heaven, and they were going to be in eternity forever with God. And that is bliss. That's where we want to go. So don't be so concerned about your time here on earth. Start preparing your heart for home time. Because there it's going to be amazing. And that's why these saints held lightly to the things of the world. Some of us, the way in which we are working here on earth, you'd think we'd be here for a thousand years. You know, folks, I heard a very sad story. And I heard this many, many years ago by, from a Scottish preacher. And I heard it on a tape. He said he knew a man who had a, a mill. In the old days, they would put a big water wheel next to a river and they'd have little buckets in it, and it would turn the wheel, and inside was the mill, and there was two big grindstones. And the grindstones would grind the corn and make it into flour. It was a mill. We had one here on the farm. Not with uh, a water wheel, but with uh, electric motors. And this man was a miller. But his whole life was completely caught up in making money. That's all he was interested in. And his wife and his children would say, Dad, you must come to church. And he'd say, I don't have time. I'm working. And he got sick. And when he got sick, they put his bed by the mill, right by the grindstones. So he could hear the grindstones grinding night and day, grinding the corn, making meal, so they could sell it and make more money. He got very sick, and his family called for the minister. And said, please speak to our father. Speak to my husband. Because he is actually dying. And the minister came into the, the, the mill. And he came up to the bed and he got on his knees. And he got near the man. And he put his mouth close as he could to his ear. And he said to him, you need to make a decision for God because you are dying. And he would say, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The mill is milling the corn. How tragic is that? Right up until the time he died. I've known of men on their deathbed. They'll call for their laptop and they'll be working out figures on how much money they're making in the company, but they're going to eternal judgment. My dear friend, don't be like that. That is, a, that is so foolish. I've got some young grandchildren. If I told them that, they would say granddad or they call me Kulu, which is Zulu for granddad. How can a grown man be so foolish? You can't take anything with you to heaven. You're going to heaven the same way as you came out of your mother's womb with absolutely nothing. 
You see, it's where your heart is. That's where your treasure is, Jesus said. I want to say to you, live life to the full. I want to say to you, leave the days that you've got on this earth in God's hands. Do what you can. Okay, I can honestly tell you, my dear friend, I am living my dream as I speak to you now. If you said to me, Uncle Angus, what else would you like to do? Anything. Be an astronaut, go and walk on the moon, be a multi, multi trillionaire, whatever you want. I'd say, I'd like to do what I'm doing now, telling people about Jesus Christ as the risen Lord and Savior. There's nothing else that I desire to do. I am living my dream. Are you living your dream? No, well, not really. Well, why don't you do it? I want to tell you something now. You will live a happier life, a more fulfilled life, if you follow after your dream, your vision. Somebody sent me a little message the other day on my cell phone. It was one of the last statements that uh, Steve Jobs, he was the creator of uh, the Big Apple, and he was a trillionaire. He died at the age of 50. He was a, veget um, a fruitarian, not a vegetarian, a fruitarian. He only ate fruit, and he died of, I think he died of cancer. But on his deathbed, he wrote this. He said, I'm lying in a room. It's dark. He says, there's green lights that are flashing, and they are operating machines that are keeping me alive. He says, I am famous, and I'm extremely rich. He said, but I've got nothing. He said, I can get a man to drive a motor car for me, but I cannot get a man to lie in this bed and take this sickness that I've got. He came to the conclusion, I don't even know if he was a believer, he came to the conclusion, the only thing that counts in this life is to love your family, is to love one another, is to do good to other people and to share. You see what he was saying was, it's not about me, it's about what I can do for others. My dear friend, you are going to die. I don't know when. You might be sitting there and you're laughing and you're saying, well, I'm 25 years old. I want to tell you something now. The mortuary is not concerned about age. It takes any age. Just next door, we've got our, our tabernacle, our church. We were at a funeral just a few weeks ago of a young man that died in a car crash. I think he was 24 years old. So it's not about how old you are. It's about when your time is up. And when the Lord calls you, you are going home at that very time. You will not be able to say, let me go home and say goodbye to my family and let me put myself, my, my things in order and let me say sorry to those that I've offended. No. One thing about death, it is final. I know that because I've lost many of my own loved ones. You cannot say, I just wanted to say to them, I didn't mean it. Rather rectify that situation now after this program. Pick up the phone and say to that person, oh, please forgive me. I didn't mean to say what I... And it doesn't matter what the response is. If they say to you, we'll never forgive you, that, that you can't do anything about that. But one thing you can do is to humble yourself, take your hat off and say, please forgive me. And then you can go to sleep tonight with a clear conscience. Be no man's debtor. Because when God calls you home, it's time. You see, Paul knew, Paul the Apostle, he knew that he would not die until he had been to Rome to witness for Jesus. Because the Lord told him that. Jesus told him that. Acts chapter 23, verse 11. And you know that there was a group of Jews who had made a oath. They had made a, a, um, a covenant. They vowed that they would not eat food until they killed Paul. And Paul could still say, that I am immortal, because I know that I have to go to Rome, I've got a job to do in Rome, and once I've done that job, then the Lord will take me home, and that's exactly what happened. See, when you're in the perfect will of God, then you're in God's control. That's where I want to be. I don't want any of this hit and miss, you know, thumb suck, which way is the wind blowing? I want to know beyond any shadow of a doubt, that if I die tonight, I'll be in the arms of Jesus. Not I hope so, no. And you say to me, Angus, you're very arrogant. How can you say such a thing? I can because according to the Word of God, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says clearly, if I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ, and I believe in my heart that He's been raised from the dead, I shall be saved. That's it. That's my guarantee. 
John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The most famous verse in the whole Bible. Folks, that is the guarantee that I have. And that is the guarantee that you can have. And I'm going to pray for you in a few minutes because maybe you've never prayed that prayer. Or maybe you have and you've forgotten about that prayer. We need to live, okay? This is what I heard. I thought this was so beautiful. We need to, to prepare as if God was coming in a thousand years, okay? So we need to have a long-term vision. We need to build up that farm, get that business going, get that degree, get your children educated. We need to live like the Lord is coming in a thousand years. But we need to be ready as if He's coming tomorrow. We need to be ready. They asked John, uh, Martin Luther, if you knew the Lord was coming tomorrow, what would you do today? He said, I'd plant an apple tree. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, if you've been to Germany, you'll see there's apple trees everywhere. He meant you'll just carry on living. They asked John Wesley the same question. If you knew that the Lord was coming to take you home tomorrow, what would you do today? Well, he says, well, this morning I've got a Bible study at 9 o'clock. And then at 12 o'clock, I've got to go to a meeting in some other church. And this evening, I'm preaching in such a... In other words, he would carry on as normal. Not sitting in the street with sackcloth and ashes waiting for the Lord to come. Work until he comes. And most of all, enjoy it. The Lord said in John chapter 10, verse 10, He said, I came that you might have life abundantly. I want you to pray with me. We're going to pray the sinner's prayer. That's right. And we're going to confess our sins. And we're going to ask God to forgive us for trying to be so selfish and prolong our own lives. And we're going to start living for others. And then when the Lord takes us home, it's just like going through a door, opening a door and walking through into the next room, which is heaven. That's how simple it is. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, pray after me. Today I acknowledge that I cannot live one more day on this earth without you. I confess, Lord, that I have been looking after myself and not looking after others. I ask you to forgive me. I pray today, Lord, I'll make a decision. I'll start to live this life to the full and leave the length of my life on earth in your hands. And that I can say with Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is but gain. I confess all my sins, Lord. I thank you for dying for me, a sinner on the cross of Calvary. And Lord, I thank you that because you live, I can face tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you until next time. Goodbye.